dear students welcome to all of you today we are here to discuss the topic leaf internal structure in relation to photosynthesis and water loss a leaf is an organ of a vascular plant it is thin flattened organ born above ground and specialized for photosynthesis but many types of leaves are adapted in ways almost unrecognizable in those terms not flat such as many succulent leaves and conifers not above ground such as bulb scales or without photosynthetic function for example catafills spines and cotyledons conversely many structures of non vascular plants or even some lichens do look and function much like leaves several structures found in vascular plants look like leaves but have different structures examples include phyllodes and phylloclads structurally complete leaf of an angiosperm consists of a petiole that is leaf stalk a lamina means leaf blade and stipules small structures located to either side of the base of the petiole not every species produces leaves with all of these structural components in certain species paired stipules are not obvious or are absent altogether a petiole may be absent or the blade may not be laminar or flattened the petiole mechanically links the leaf to the plant and provides the route for transfer of water and sugars to and from the leaf the lamina is typically the location of the majority of photosynthesis a leaf is a plant organ and is made up of a collection of tissues in a regular organization the major tissue system present in leaf are the epidermis that covers the upper and lower surfaces the mesophyll inside the leaf that is rich in chloroplast the mesophyll cells are also called chloronchyma that is they contain abundant chloroplast the arrangement of veins the vascular tissue the epidermis is the outer layer of cells covering the leaf it forms the boundary separating the plant's inner cells from the external world the epidermis serves several functions protection against water loss by way of transpiration regulation of gas exchange secretion of metabolic compounds and in some species absorption of water most leaves show dorsoventral anatomy the upper that is adaxial and lower that is abaxial surfaces have somewhat different construction and may serve different functions the epidermis is usually transparent that is epidermal cells lack chloroplasts and are coated on the outer side means the side facing the atmospheric vagaries with a waxy cuticle that prevents water loss the cuticle 
is a fatty layer and is in some cases thinner on the lower epidermis than on the upper epidermis and is generally thicker on leaves from dry climates as compared with those from wet climates. The thick cuticle in case of xerophytes or in succulents growing in arid zones prevents the plant from transpiration loss. The epidermis tissue includes several differentiated cell types, epidermal cells, epidermal hair cells that is trichomes. Cells in the stomata complex, guard cells and subsidiary cells. The epidermal cells are the most numerous, largest and least specialized and form the majority of the epidermis. These are typically more elongated in the leaves of monocots than in those of dicots. The epidermis is covered with pores called stomata. The stomata are natural anatomical microscopic openings. The part of a stoma complex consisting of a pore surrounded on each side by chloroplast containing god cells and two to four subsidiary cells that lack chloroplasts. Opening and closing of the stoma complex regulates the exchange of gases and water vapor between the outside air and interior of the leaf and plays an important role in allowing photosynthesis without letting the leaf dry out. In a typical leaf, the stomata are more numerous over the abaxial that is lower epidermis than the adaxial that is upper epidermis and more numerous in plants from cooler climates. The middle part of the leaf called mesophyll is distinguished into two regions that is the palisade tissue on dorsal side and spongy tissue on ventral side. The palisade cells lie in parallel direction with each other and contain abundant chloroplast with little intercellular spaces in between them. The palisade cells are more or less compactly arranged. The cells of the spongy tissue are oval and are loosely arranged. This loose arrangement of cells favors high transpiration as water vapors accumulate in these lacuna and thereby create water potential gradient with respect to outer atmosphere of leaf. Thus, more compact mesophyll means a little lacuna means less transpiration, loose mesophyll means more intracellular spaces in the mesophyll means more transpiration. Therefore, leaf internal structure it is linked with transpiration process. The leaf of dicots is therefore called dorsoventral leaf because of tissue differentiation in the interior of leaf. In monocot leaves there is no demarcation of mesophyll tissue into palisade and spongy. Hence, monocot leaf is called isobilateral leaf means leaf having two equal sides. Leaves are normally green in color which comes from chlorophyll found in chloroplast. In chloronchyma cells, plants that lack chlorophyll cannot photosynthesize. Leaf anatomy is adequately constructed for two vital activities that is photosynthesis and transpiration. Photosynthesis is an anabolic process 
by which green parts of plants manufacture carbonaceous organic food by taking carbon dioxide from atmosphere through stomata, capillary water from lithosphere through roots. In presence of photons of light which are being trapped by chlorophyll molecules, this photosynthesis converts light energy into the chemical energy of sugars and other organic compounds without letting the leaf dry out. This process consists of a series of chemical reactions that require carbon dioxide and water and store chemical energy in the form of sugar. Light energy from light drives the reactions. Oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis and is released into the atmosphere. The equation summarizes the photosynthesis. Six molecules of carbon dioxide combined with six molecules of water in presence of photons of light trapped by chlorophyll plant manufacture sugar and it gives off six molecules of oxygen in this process. Photosynthesis transfers electrons from water to energy poor carbon dioxide molecules forming energy rich sugar molecules. This electron transfer is an example of an oxidation reduction process. The water is oxidized that means loses electron and CO2 is reduced that means it gains electrons. Photosynthesis uses light energy to drive the electrons from water to their more energetic states in the sugar products thus converting solar energy into chemical energy. The solar energy called visible light drives photosynthesis. Solar radiation is composed of electromagnetic energy that travels through space in a manner analogous to the motion of waves in water. The distance between the crests of waves is called the wavelength. The shorter the wavelength, the greater the energy for each unit photon of electromagnetic energy. When light is absorbed by a green plant, a small portion of that energy is converted into chemical energy in the process of photosynthesis. Leaves are a plant's main photosynthetic organs. Leaf structure is closely associated with its photosynthetic function. Leaves must permit carbon dioxide access to the photosynthetic cells, but impede water from diffusing out. The oxygen that is a waste product of photosynthesis must be allowed to escape from the leaf. Mesophyll cells are specialized for photosynthesis. These cells in the middle of the leaf contain many chloroplasts, the organelles that perform photosynthesis. Transpiration which is associated with leaf internal structure is a physiological process somewhat similar to evaporation. Transpiration may also be defined as a loss of water in the form of invisible water vapors from the aerial parts of the plants. It is a part of the water cycle and it is the loss of water vapor from parts of plants, especially in leaves, but also in stems, flowers and roots. Leaf surfaces are dotted with openings which are collectively called stomata and in most plants they are more numerous on the underside of the foliage. The stomata are bordered by guard cells that open and close the pore due to turgor changes. Leaf transpiration occurs through stomata and can be thought of as a necessary cost associated with the opening of the stomata to allow the diffusion of carbon dioxide gas from the air. 
for photosynthesis. Transpiration also cools plants and enables mass flow of mineral nutrients and water from roots to shoots. Besides these functions, transpiration process enables plant cells to maintain turgidity of cells. In highly transpiring plants, adequate mechanical tissue develops which gives rigidity and support to the plant. Transpiration process has also some disadvantages such as access to transpiration in summer during middays leads to wilting. Wilting leads to a reduction of growth and due to continuous wilting leaf, flower, fruit it abscises due to accumulation of abscisic acid. This transpiration process has got many advantages and some disadvantages and it was Curtis in 1926 who regarded transpiration as necessary evil. There are three kinds of transpiration. Number one, stomatal transpiration. Number two, cuticular transpiration. And number third, lenticular transpiration. Number first, stomatal transpiration. Loss of water vapors through pores called stomata surrounded by specialized guard cells is called stomatal transpiration. It accounts up to 90 percent of water loss. It is thus physiologically most important. Cuticular transpiration. The epidermal cells are mostly cutinized that is the cutin impregnated in the outer cellulosic cell wall. Some transpiration approximately up to 10 percent takes place by the direct evaporation of water from the outer walls of epidermal cells. Now, lenticular transpiration. Water loss through lenticellus and these lenticellus are found in woody stems and fruits. Water loss through these lenticellus is called lenticular transpiration. It constitutes about 1 to 2 percent of total water loss through transpiration. Now, transpiration process has got many advantages such as ascent of sap. Transpiration exerts a tension or pull on water column in tracheary elements and that pull is responsible for upward movement of water and minerals which we call ascent of sap. Absorption of water. Transpiration process facilitates passive absorption of water from soil through roots. Transport of minerals. Transpiration process assists translocation of dissolved mineral salts through xylem. Now, some of the disadvantages of transpiration are transpiration process reduces photosynthesis. Under conditions of water scarcity, the rate of photosynthesis decreases. It is due to closure of stomata resulting in non-supply of carbon dioxide and loss of turgidity by the cells. Stomatal closure is being induced by synthesis of a citrus hormone called abscisic acid. A reduction in growth and yield, all expansion and elongation requires turgidity. Water deficit leads to wilting and low growth. No new leaves are formed 
stems and roots lose their meristematic activity, fall in metabolism. The protoplasm requires a certain optimum hydration for maximum efficiency. Now, leaf has got a definite uh, relationship with transpiration. Besides the opening and closing of stomata, there are a number of external factors that affect the transpiration rate. External variables are known as abiotic factors. There are four abiotic factors that affect transpiration. Guard cells close the stomata in darkness. So, much more water vapor is lost in light during the daytime. So, that means light has got effect on the rate of transpiration by way of opening and closing of stomata. Stomata usually opens during the daytime and closes at night. So, more transpiration takes place during daytime. For water to operate from the leaf, heat is required. Therefore, the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of transpiration. In a dry environment, more water vapor is lost. When the air around the plant is humid, the concentration gradient is not as steep. So, less water diffuses from the leaf. Due to the fact that air saturated with water vapor often form near the stomata, wind also plays a role in transpiration. When the wind blows across the surface of a leaf, the saturated air is pulled from the leaf. So, this is all about the topic leaf internal structure in relation to photosynthesis and water loss. In this topic, we have discussed about structure of leaf, external morphology, internal structure and organization of tissues, a relationship of leaf with transpiration and photosynthesis.